The other day on my stream, there was a brother in Christ who was struggling with sexual sin. And we had a very edifying conversation. I want to post it up somewhere where it's more easily accessible so that anyone who might be struggling with the same kind of things, whether it's just addictions or whatever it is, struggling against sin, struggling against the flesh, so that this can help you guys out. So stay tuned. Everyone in the modern world is going through something like this. It may not be specifically what you're going through, like with uh, watching biography to like such an extent or like eat, eating binge eating but you know some people they drink or they do drugs but everyone has something like this pretty much in the modern world because we're living in just a sick decaying disgusting society so the first thing that i asked you after you told me is because you're talking about how like you watch prawn everything's painful and like you hate everything till you watch prawn like just basically this addiction cycle and what you're describing right is very perfectly just the addiction cycle you feel bad and so in order to you know deal with your negative emotions right you give into the addiction it could be drugs it could be you know in this case watching prawn having sex binge eating and then once you give into the addiction you know you have that you know high for a little bit and then after you have the high you come back down to reality and you're like, I can't believe I've just done this, man. And then that makes you feel even worse about yourself, which makes you feel bad about your life. And then in order to not feel bad about your life anymore, you give into the addiction again to get rid of the anxiety, the depression, the anguish. And then you have you ride on this high for a little bit until ultimately coming back down and, you know, progressively this cycle will <clears throat> keep getting worse and worse and worse and worse and since what you were you're dealing with in particular is sexual i asked you um were you molested as a kid right and this is an unfortunate um reality that people don't want to face but because our <clears throat> world has become so sexualized so hyper sexualized the statistics have gotten to the point now where it's about one in seven children in public school are molested or raped in public school. And these are just facts. Okay? This is just straight facts right here. One in seven. So if you go to a school, if any of you guys are still in school, go to your school and I want you to count seven classmates. One of those seven classmates statistically has been molested or raped while in school okay so <clears throat> this is something that we need to acknowledge one in seven kids get molested in public school and what happens when you get molested is that <clears throat> this generally results in forms of sexual deviancy you know in women a lot of women they become lesbian or transgender after getting raped or assaulted now the reason why that happens for women is because women they feel like as though the reason why they got raped is because they are a weak female and so in order to not feel so weak in order to not feel so vulnerable they feel like they have to change their you know inherent nature to become a different person or to just become the other gender and they essentially are attempting to become their wrist. now in the case of men that can happen that's not as normal though the normal response with men is they have this conflicted feeling within their heart immediately after because when you're it and uh, you said that you were going through this for several years every day what happens is that feeling that happens to you, and I'm, I'm trying to talk about this as lightly as I can, but this is a dark subject. So remember to subscribe to me on Rumble because I'm just streams probably going to get taken down. But what happens is that you start to have a confliction within yourself because the feeling physically of getting touched or stayed around can feel physically good but psychologically this is not something that you want to be happening to you 
especially if you're like a little kid, you don't have any sexual arousals. This is like a traumatizing experience, but there's a lot of confusion there because physically that feeling is good. But experientially, this is like horrific, like getting murdered. Okay. And so what happens in men typically who get sexually assaulted is they want to like start revisiting that experience in their mind. Okay. Because they want to make sense of those emotions that they went through, which is not, <clears throat> it's not healthy because what they end up doing is they want to like kind of recreate it. So they start watching porn. They start doing things that recreate that sense of anxiety, that sense of dread, that negative emotion, but also has this sexual element to it. Many men who get molested, they will become homosexuals. If they were molested by a man, they'll become like homosexuals or trans and in some very bad cases they will even become fists or piles depending on you know how severe the trauma is and how they deal with the trauma the reason why you're stuck <clears throat> in this cycle of sin is because you have this trauma in the past and you're going through this for several years every day that's unimaginable i can't I can relate to this in some sense because I was molested once when I was like eight. I was in second grade and uh, a group of homosexual predators that I didn't realize were predators because I was a little kid. I just thought they were cool adults or not adults, but cool teenagers that wanted to hang out with me because I was so cool. Started, <clears throat> you know, hanging around me and they um, hit me when I was uh, like eight and I ended up becoming a homosexual for a while because of that now thankfully thanks to jesus christ and his mercy and his help the holy spirit's help in my life i'm no longer that way <clears throat> but the the fact is like that happens and I, I know from personal experience the reason that you're stuck in this continual cycle of sexual sin is basically because you're associating anxiety and fear with sexual pleasure because the first ever sexual experience you had was this this because of that these two emotions in your life have become coupled together which is not good right especially so for you and so in order to get turned on you need to feel anxious and then when you feel anxious in just your general life, that is associated with feelings. And this is all a result of that traumatic experiences that you had as a child, as a kid. These two things have become linked now. And so you, you're you probably watching, like, you know, I became a little bit. You're probably watching some bad stuff, some pretty sick stuff or doing weird stuff. I don't want to, you know, I, you don't need to tell us. I don't want to hear, honestly, you know, but... <clears throat> what what happens is right you can't get turned on unless you're feeling anxiety but eventually what you're normally watching normal normal no it's normal but normal not turning on anymore and you go deeper and deeper and deeper into this six school addiction which is all stemming from getting state or having some kind of trauma the way to overcome this sin biblically speaking right is to walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh i'm gonna read you a scripture here <clears throat> this is from galatians chapter 5 galatians is a good book on salvation right but it does also talk about some other topics towards the end it talks about sin in Galatians chapter 5, it says this. It says, For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. This is Galatians 5.13, and we're going to read to the end here. I'm going to break this down for you. So, in Galatians chapter 5, it says, For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only 
Use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So I want you to understand this because I don't know if you've been watching my channel for a while, but my brother, we are saved by faith alone in Christ alone, right? For God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish and have everlasting life. That is John 3, 16, right? And the Bible teaches that once we are saved, once we've believed in Christ, even if we stop believing, even if we continue to watch porn, even if you're a homosexual, even if you're a murderer, a rapist, you will still be saved. Because we're not saved by what we do, we're saved by what Jesus did for us on the cross about 2,000 years ago. We're getting close to that now. We are called to liberty in Christ. We have liberty in Christ that we can live however we want and we are still going to heaven because Jesus basically went to hell for us. And since Jesus basically went to hell in our place, we can't go to hell. We're saved forever. And it says in Romans 8, 38 and 39, that neither death, you can't commit suicide, can't make you lose your salvation, nor life. Nothing you can do in your life can make you lose your salvation, nor things present. Nothing you could do right now can make you lose your salvation, nor things to come. Nothing you could do in the future can make you lose your salvation. None of these things can separate you from the love of God. So no matter what sins you commit, you are saved eternally by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because God loves you. So we're called into liberty. You, can, you are literally free to continue living in sin. You would still go to heaven, my friend. But he says this, do not use your liberty for an occasion of the flesh. So don't use your liberty to fulfill the carnal lusts of the physical body, right? Don't use your liberty in Christ to sin is essentially what he's saying, right? Don't use your freedom in Christ that you can live however you want to sin, but instead love one another for all the law is fulfilled in one word. <clears throat> even this, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So all of the commandments, the whole 10 commandments, there's really 613 commandments in the Bible, but all of them can be fulfilled with just one principle. Love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. So if you are loving your neighbor as much as you love yourself, you are keeping all of the commandments. So Although we have the liberty and the freedom to do whatever we want and we will still be saved no matter what we do, we should not use this freedom to sin. We should use this freedom to love one another. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you are not consumed of one another. When we sin, sin will physically destroy us sin, which is the sin that we're talking about here, sexual sin will destroy you. It can give you STDs. You can have all kinds of health problems. I was doing, I don't want to get too deep into what I was doing, but I was starting to experience health problems from my sexual sins. So sin will destroy you. And this is why we need to avoid sin. But how do we avoid sin? This is what it says. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So he says the, the key to not fulfilling the lust and the lust of the flesh is the reason we sin, right? The key to not fulfilling the lusts of the flesh and sinning is to walk in the spirit. But what does that mean? So it says this, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you want. Let me break this down to you. Now this is, this is deep, all right? But pay attention, right? This is gonna help you to understand. So the human being is designed 
with two parts, two fundamental parts, the spirit and the flesh. The flesh is your physical body. You see my arm here? You see this hand? This is flesh. Flesh, blood, and bone, right? Flesh, the physical body. But then, right, we're not just a rock, right? We're not just a tree. We're alive. What animates us? What animates the physical body is the spirit. So you have a soul animating a physical fleshly body, right? Now, both your spirit and your physical fleshly body are vying for control over your mind, okay? So your mind is the battleground between the needs of your spirit and the needs of your physical body. So your physical body, right, it lusts after eating. Why does it lust after eating? It lusts after eating because you need to eat to survive. And your physical body is an amoral resource seeker. It does not care about morality so long as it fulfills its needs for survival. So if you lust for food, right? You're hungry. That's the flesh lusting. We lust to have, you know, safety, right? We also lust to have sex because sex is how we continue our physical genetic line, right? Your physical body can live on in your children, but your spirit lusts after different things. It lusts after good things, wholesome things, innocent things. Your spirit essentially lusts to be a good person, okay? But the problem is, is that we have both the flesh and the spirit, and sometimes the flesh and the spirit are in contradiction to each other. They are against each other. Now, God intentionally designed you this way. And the reason he designed you this way is so that you cannot do the things that you want to do. He gave you a spirit so that you do not become as sinful as you possibly can. Right? I know you have a spirit in you because you said, why can't I stop sinning? Why can't God make me stop sinning? You don't want to sin. And that's what's keeping you from going all the way into your sin. But your flesh, your physical body is keeping you from being a perfectly good person. They are designed to be contrary to one another. So you cannot do the things that you want to do. But we can find freedom from sin, right? Don't get me wrong. But the flesh was designed specifically to make it a struggle because God did not want our lives to be easy. He wanted us to have a genuine reason to not obey him. So he gave us the flesh so that we would be tempted and have genuine reasons to not obey God. And he gave us a spirit to keep us from fully giving into our flesh. All right. Now listen to this. Verse 18 of Galatians chapter five. If you are led of the spirit, you are not under the law, right? If you are being led by the spirit, if you're obeying the spirit, you're not breaking any commandments. You're following God's commandments, right? So the key to following the commandments, the key to not sinning is by walking in the spirit. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, that's cheating on your wife, fornication, that is having sex before marriage, uncleanness, right? Being filthy, being a, being a discord mod, right? Not showering <laughs> lasciviousness. That's what you have. You have lasciviousness, my brother in Christ, you have lasciviousness, which is sexual lust, idolatry. That's worshiping false gods witchcraft, hatred, variance, variance is like fighting, emulations, that's, you know, trying to emulate someone else, right? Trying to be like others, wrath, that's being angry all the time, strife, that's constantly arguing, 
seditions seditions is like civil war kind of heresy heresy even you know teaching false doctrine that's a lust of the flesh right and we can get more into that later i don't want to focus on that envyings murders drunkenness and such like of the which i tell you before and have told you in times past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of god now i just want to touch on that if you are saved as in you believed on the lord jesus christ alone you can't go to hell but if you are unsaved right if you haven't believed on the lord jesus christ yet if you don't believe in jesus then those sins will send you to hell no one who's committing those sins will get into heaven unless they're saved and their sins have been forgiven by the blood of jesus right but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law so you have the lust of the flesh that drive you to sin and you have the lust of the spirit that drives you to righteousness. We don't win the war against sin by fighting against our sins. I'm not, I'm not going to do drugs. I'm not going to watch. I'm not going to, you know, be a glutton. That's, that's not how you win the war. The way you win the war is you just totally just don't give a f if you sin or not. Instead, whether you sin or not, focus on walking in the spirit love your neighbor as yourself be loving to the people around you go say i mean i don't know about your relationship with your parents i can't imagine that they're that's good so i won't give that example but go talk to your friends and edify them and show them compassion talk to them and ask them about their problems help them go visit them right love your friends right? Long suffering, right? Long suffering is a fruit of the spirit, right? Be patient with people, right? Gentleness, be gentle towards people. Have faith, right? Read the Bible, believe the Bible. Meekness, right? Put others first before putting yourself first. Temperance against which there is no law. When we walk in the spirit, right? My understanding of it Maybe I'm wrong, but to walk in the spirit is to focus on good and noble things. It says, I believe in Timothy, it says, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is innocent, whatsoever is noble, meditate on those things. So meditate on good things. Focus your mind on good things. Don't focus on how bad your sin is. Instead, just focus on doing good. Just ignore your sin right if you sin you know just say god i'm sorry please forgive me you know i don't want to sin but then just get up and just keep going just keep doing good just keep doing good you know i've sinned today i've done evil things today but i'm not going to let that stop me from serving god because the key to overcoming sin is to walk in the spirit what i'm doing right now sharing the word of god trying to help people online right here this is walking in the spirit this is an example of walking in the spirit how i'm trying to help you right now and when we walk in the spirit you can't fulfill the lust of the flesh listen let's just say i was struggling with porn addiction right i'm not going to be on a live stream talking about how much how great god is and we're reading the bible reading the gospel of luke and then i whip out my and i start you know my you know uh, that's not that's not gonna happen because i'm walking in the spirit right my mind isn't even in a place where that is like a possibility you know if i if i'm on here doing this right now i'm not gonna like you know hot reel a line of meth <laughs> I don't, I don't even know. I think you uh, hot rail a, a ball. I don't know. I don't know. I don't do drugs. Okay. But I'm not going to hot rail mess on stream while I'm telling you about God, you know, because I'm walking in the spirit. When you're doing good, when you're walking in the spirit, you literally can't sin when you're walking in the spirit, right? 
What I recommend to anyone who's struggling with sin and to my brother here, when you walk in the spirit, right? You can't fulfill the lust of the flesh. You can't be watching, you can't be over when you're walking in the spirit. So what I recommend to you, right? Spend time reading your Bible, right? Join the stream with us, right? Uh, enjoy the stream. You're going to be reading through the gospel of Luke chapter two today. Learn about our savior, right? It says in 1 John, let me read this to you because this will also help you. This will help you a lot what I'm about to read to you. Now, you got to be careful reading the book of 1 John. Many people take it out of context to teach something that it's not teaching, right? But it says this. It says in 1 John chapter 2. Now, this is about the Christian life. It's not about salvation. It's not about heaven and hell. It's about loving God, about obeying God. It says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 4, He that says, I know him, but keeps not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keeps his word, in him is the love of God perfected, and hereby we know that we are in him. He that says he abides in him ought to also so walk, even as he has walked, right? So what is it saying? It's saying, if you say that you know God, now what is knowing God? What is knowing Jesus? It's not just being aware of Jesus' existence or knowing he died for your sins, but it's actually understanding who he is, understanding what just what the nature it is of what Jesus did for you, truly understanding the character of God as a person, not just as a concept of a being out there, but as a, but as a person, having a personal relationship. If someone says they have a personal relationship where they know God, but they're living in sin, they're lying. They don't know God. And what this teaches us is that the key to overcoming sin is to get to know Jesus. And that's why I do these streams reading the Bible. Because if you watch these streams, it will help you to get to truly know who God is, who Jesus is. And when you understand who Jesus is, you can't sin. Like, you can't. And one more thing I will read to you is in 1 John chapter 1. It says this. It says, If we say that we have fellowship with God and walk in darkness, we lie and do not tell the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. And what this is saying is that if you say you have fellowship with Jesus, which again, this is talking about prayer, personal relationship, which not every Christian is fostering, right? I barely foster. I only pray to God in like, I don't know, like sparingly throughout the day, right? The Bible tells us to be in constant prayer, constantly be talking to God. So, you know, if you're not constantly praying, constantly talking to God, you're going to walk in darkness. But when we have fellowship with God and we talk to God and we foster a personal relationship with him through prayer, communicating with him, reading his word, understanding who he is, we find freedom from sin because our love for God will outweigh our lust to sin. So I hope that this has helped you and I hope that, uh, this helps anyone who's struggling with sin in the chat here. And just know that we're all fallible. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. Even me, everyone here has sinned, right? The Bible says, if any man says he does not have sin, he is a liar. The truth is not in him. So we've all sinned. But remember that God does want us to overcome sin. He will help us to overcome sin, that we can actually do it. God wouldn't tell us to do it if it's not possible. But also remember not to hold yourself to too high of a standard and hate yourself because you've messed up. 
Because you got to remember, we are all products of our past experiences. If you were for several years, like if you're molested every day for seven years, God's not expecting you to just overnight, oh, I'm not going to sin anymore. <laughs> no, he's not expecting you to be like that, you know? God's merciful. He'd rather, he'd rather mercy, not sacrifice, you know? Hosea 6.6. 6.